Hey, Monty. Hey, Miles. How you doing? Pretty good. What you doing? Uh, well, I heard that today's Ruby Production Diary was going to be focusing on artwork and such, so I figured I'd make a masterpiece of my own. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what we're going to be seeing today? That's right. This week, we're going to be focusing on concept, design, and modeling. We're also going to be taking a look back at Velvet Scarlatina's battle gear design, taking it from concept to modeling and to places unknown. We're really trying to cram art into every second yes. of today's episode, which is why I made this. It's, it's Team Ruby. It's beautiful. Thank you. Ruby as a show, it needs to be a very unique blend of fantasy and reality, but to keep it slightly above normal design, I often add just a touch of fantasy to them, so it very often lands into like um, contemporary or modern design plus. Having a winner for the Velvet Design Contest, we knew that there would be subtle changes that will complement her weapon, complement the rest of her team. It really works for her because it's very simple. It's very nice, like she has the bits of armor and stuff on her that denotes battle, but she's still delicate, I guess is the way to put it. Velvet's actually a mage, so it makes sense to have that elvish kind of armor to her, that fancy but dainty, delicate kind of armor to her. So it really lends well to her character. Nobody else in the kingdom has an outfit like this. The only thing we changed is the color, because uh, we wanted to have her a warmer air about her, so we changed it from green to a brown. In considering the rest of her team, I needed something that matched it more, and also, Although I really like the original color scheme, it, it was a little too bright for her. We can build on simplicity. We can make, and if that simplicity at the beginning is great, then there's very little that we do with it. It, can, it sustains these minor changes that none of the designers could have anticipated. It's like we know what the character is, we know where we want it to go, we know what she wields. Yeah, we loved where it was going, so it was just taking us to go, all right, what can we do to just push it just a bit more to make her what we think of Velvet and what we think she's gonna be. So next up, we'll be taking this process into actually making the 3D model, which I'm actually, it's all happening right over there. And I'm right now I'm working on the Velvet model. We get a concept for the character, so most of it's already there for us. We just have to translate that into 3D, but it's a 2D image. So when we bring that into 3D, we have to make sure that from every angle that character comes through. Now that I've laid out all the polygons onto a flat surface, I am coloring those polygons in Photoshop. This screen here is, shows like all the polygons laid out flat and organized into a square texture, because each one of those polygons on the flat surface represents a polygon on the 3D model. That way I can just paint on them in a flat image and that'll transfer over to the 3D model and it'll take all the color information from that texture, that flat texture, and show it on the 3D model. When you look at a design, you have to take into consideration the fact that this person will also be moving. Even, I'd even say to the non-winners of the Velvet Design Contest, there weren't losers. There were a lot of winners among them, but it could be only one we choose. <laughs> so this is what her weapon's gonna be in. We're not showing the weapon yet, because yeah, no. you're not gonna see that yet, but we need, so we need something for her to carry it in. Her weapon is in a case. Yeah. Maybe give me that case right now, just maybe a little thinner. I don't know, it's just like, it feels unwieldy. Yeah, that's right. We talked a lot about like straps and stuff and like how many pieces like... The belts are just mainly decorations. We'll put pouches on the belts and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, practicality for pouches is always important to me. So maybe she'll have a few pouches. Yeah. But the, the weapon itself, I'd say all fit would... I'm going to try my damnedest to fit it all in that box. And she just wears it around her shoulder. The personality doesn't only come from the characters, but it comes from the weapons. And the way they lend themselves to each other is very unique. <laughs> So weapons tend to be a pretty big part of Ruby. People were able to identify very early on unique aspects of some of the weapons. One of the earliest ideas I had was a giant, like, high caliber sniper rifle with a blade attached, where it would use the kick, and when firing the scythe, whilst the blade is hooked on an enemy, the kick from the gun would just, you know, take that blade and just like, <laughs> like pull it through an enemy. Whoa! Is that a scythe? It's also a customizable, high-impact sniper rifle. The first version of the sniper scythe is very similar to one of those giant sniper rifles you see uh, in modern day. I was like, well, if I just attach a blade to this, I'm gonna get what I want. The final version of Crescent Rose that you see, I took the barrel end of it and turned it sideways because it, it matched the vertical shape of it more. And so, in its open form, it looks like this. In its neutral form, it folds up to about this. 
You know, and when I think of the four girls as a team, I almost look at it as like as if we're an RPG. So they complement each other in that they fill out a bunch of different classes that I would want on my RPG team. People are going to see some familiar locations that we visited in Volume 1, but we've already updated the look a little bit further. The, the world of Ruby as a whole has evolved since last volume. It's going to be kind of neat to see what everybody thinks about that. When we had the need to have a concept artist for environments, I had one person in mind, and it was Christina. This year, you're art director because we need a lot more hands-on, and the environments are looking so much better now. I work one-on-one, -on -one, mostly with the modelers. It gets the job done really quick because I could see the progress. And then I can do, I can ask them to do a really quick color change. If that's not working, they can change it. And that I learned a lot from just seeing how the modelers work too and then how they can work with me so they don't have to do like too many big changes. Now that you're awake, we can officially begin our first order of business. Decorating! My job is to model and texture anything that, that doesn't have to do with characters or creatures. So basically all buildings, some of the vehicles, Ruby hits a very unique note where it's an anime -esque show where everything's done in 3D. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have to like find an area where the art can actually sustain the concept. Just communicate very, very simply. Yeah. Uh, not too much distraction in the background because I like to, in my environment, I like to communicate more with just silhouettes and shapes. The thing that I understood from his less is more type design is that in Ruby, it's very a flat but very colorful type of show. It's not simplistic. And texture-wise, there's no real textures. It's mostly like gradients and that kind of good stuff. So you get all these really, I guess the word for it is uh, emotional kind of uh, colors to the show or into the, each setting. This is New Vale. The textures have been reworked. This season we decided to give a little more focus to the characters. So the coloring, not just in Vale, but in, in the rest of the backgrounds, is uh, a little more muted. So whenever you see the characters, the backgrounds aren't going to be right in your face along with them. We also added a lot of uh, like holographic assets into the scene. So we're going to see like holographic traffic lights and uh, light fixtures and everything. See, so there's different sections of Vale that we can get into. Like I think we saw it last year when Torchwood pulled up a map of Vale. We saw all these districts and stuff like that. So now we'll actually get to go into more of those districts. Thank you for joining us for another Ruby Production Diary. Yes, next time we'll be taking a look at the voice acting, animation, and motion capture process that goes into making the animation for the show. It is all very cool, it is all very technical, and it is all something we hope you can enjoy next time. So tune in again. Yeah! You guys are messing up my mocap. You're messing up my day, Shane. You're messing up my day. You could... Why does he have those? Why does he have those?